this lecture we would talk about the structure and the germination of seed first of all the very first question fruit that you must be liking a lot comes from which part of the plant it comes from ovary now within the fruit we find what seeds these seeds are formed by ovules now ovules are present within the ovary now this structure of ovule we have understood in our previous section where we have talked about uh, the process of fertilization and pollination now uh, this ovule has a very classic structure the outer layer and the inner layer the seed coat as it is called as is the outermost covering which protects the endosperm endosperm is where uh, or the food is actually stored now the most important thing is the outer integument is what is known as testa the inner integument is known as tegmen so we have the two important layers testa and tegmen now seeds do remain dormant for a duration dormant means they remain an inactive but when would these seeds germinate another important question when they get optimum water optimum oxygen and optimum temperature these stay is seeds would germinate till the time these are not found the seed would remain in the state of dormancy extremely important to note now in this section we would first understand the structure of a monocot and a dicot seed to begin with a dicot seed in the dicot seed the outermost layer which protects the embryo is what is known as the seed coat the outer layer as i said is the testa the inner layer is the tegmen testa is relatively thick hard and dry the next is the embryo embryo in the case of dicot has five divisions plumule gives rise to the shoot of the plant here are the plumules radical give rise to the root cotyledon are known as the seed leaves and these are where the food is actually stored so they act as storage center epicotyl is the point where plumule the tip of the plumule originates and hypocotyl is the region between epicotyl and radical so this is the region which is hypocotyl so this is a basic classification that you need to understand in a dicot one important thing hilum and microphyll hilum is what hilum is the concave structure or the depression of dark color on a bean if you have observed now this concave depression of dark color is what is known as hilum this is the point where ovary remains attached to the placenta in a uh, the ovule remain attached to the placenta in an ovary microphyll is a very small opening close to the hilum and this is the point through where the diffusion of gases actually takes place and this is another important role which is absorption of moisture in the case of germination the next important thing is monocot seed monocot seed is a classic seed now monocot seed we do have endosperm which is very large in contrast to a di uh, dicot seed so endosperm is large in a monocot seed embryo is relatively small and in a monocot seed embryo is divided into cotyledon plumule and radical just three of these right the covering of the plumule is known as coleoptile the covering of the radical is known as coleoriza then is the cotyledon the cotyledon is also known as the scutellum now understanding the endosperm endosperm is where the food is stored one very important thing is one side is small white and opaque if you look on to the maize seed you would see a whitish structure at the bottom now this whitish structure at the bottom is what is embryo however in the case of a dicot this embryo is large in monocot the endosperm is large okay one is very important in the dicot the endosperm is absent in dicot 
द प्लिम्यूल एक्चुअली इज लार्ज एंड फोल्डेड इन अ मोनोकॉट द प्लिम्यूल इज लार्ज एंड रोल्ड क्लियर सो दैट्स वन अनदर डिफरेंस ना अदर टाइप्स ऑफ सी वन इंपॉर्टेंट क्लासिफिकेशन इज मोनोकॉट एंड डाइकॉट मोनोकॉट इज वॉट मेज राइज वीट डाइकॉट इज वॉट पीज एंड बीन्स द नेक्स्ट इज बेस्ड ऑन द प्रेजेंस और एबसेंस ऑफ एंडोस्पर्म सो इफ देर इज एंडोस्पर्म विच इज प्रेजेंट वी कॉल इट एज एल्ब्यूमिनस इट इज कॉल्ड एज एक्स एल्ब्यूमिनस इफ देर इज नो एंडोस्पर्म विच इज प्रेजेंट now when i say endosperm is present it is known as albuminous that means the food is stored where the food is stored in endosperm if it is ex albuminous food is stored where food is stored in the cotyledon so good examples of ex albuminous monocot and dicot so in ex albuminous dicot example is p food is stored in cotyledon mango food is stored in cotyledon similarly monocot the examples are orchids velisneria in albuminous which is endospermic dicot the good examples are custard apple poppy however in monocots good examples are cereal and palm the next is how does the process of germination occur so germination occurs either as epigeal germination or hypogeal germination epigeal germination occurs when the uh, the seed actually comes above the surface or the hypocotyl comes above the surface and then cotyledons form the first green leaves and after that the normal leaves of the plant would appear epigeal germination is seen in beans castor cotton tamarind and gourd however hypogeal germination the cotyledon remains inside the soil itself and epicotyl elongates at a faster pace than the hypocotyl epicotyl gives rise to the um, the the plumule and here what happens is when the cotyledon is within the structure within the surface uh, it would convert the starch into sugar and these would be transferred to the radical in the root and plumule in the shoot and through the uh, piercing of the pericarp and the testa there would be uh, developments that would be seen now another important thing that we would understand is viviparous germination or vivipary germination vivipary germination is seen in rhizophora and sonorata uh, both of those are mangroves so what happens is from the fruit itself the root would arise now once from the fruit the radical or the root arises due to water due to pressure this becomes heavy and finally moves off the plant and develops into lateral roots so formation of lateral roots also take place in the same manner so this vivipary germination is another classic example which is usually seen in marshy lands and marshy seeds and once they fall off in the mud development of the lateral roots start the next is from the seed there is the seedling stage from the seedling stage young stage and finally the mature stage of the plant takes place now what are three important parameters as we said water oxygen and temperature which are required for the germination for the process of seedling to complete now water should be optimum oxygen should be required and temperature should not be too less because it would inhibit the germination if it is too high it would destroy the process of germination so temperature should range somewhere from 25 to 35 degree celsius now i take a very simple example if i put put certain seeds and in that seeds i have a pyrogallic acid solution what would happen this pyrogallic acid actually absorbs oxygen that means the seeds won't be able to germinate and therefore the germination would fail however in place of pyrogallic acid if it is water it would have uh, the oxygen which would be present and finally the seeds would germinate i take another example in a test tube i put certain seeds here on a rod which seed would germinate the upper one won't germinate because there is no water which is present this is the water level the lower one would not germinate because there is no free oxygen from the air that would be present the one which is present in the middle would germinate because it has optimum water optimum air as well as optimum temperature so based on this we understand all three water oxygen and temperature are required for the process of germination a very very important topic that we have understood now from the seed the roots would actually absorb water and mineral through the xylem uh, and then 
the leaves would manufacture the food once the leaf manufacture the food through the phloem it is transported to all parts of the plant body so it is transported down laterally as well as upwards so in all the directions you would have the flow of phloem but xylem would flow from the roots towards the shoot so that's again an important thing however xylem phloem we have covered in our class on plant tissues in detail so that's another topic that you must be familiar with if you have any questions feel free to post those in the comment section and definitely the complete class 9th icsc biology we have covered on the youtube sessions follow us have a wonderful day ahead